Hello friend. Today we will try to understand another part of the series the way Jesus died and why he died that way. There is two interesting uh, aspect recorded in the gospel of Mark and ninth and uh, gospel of John. According to gospel of John 19 was 28 It says that later knowing that everything had now been finished and so so that scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty and we have never thought about a thirst and hunger Jesus faced through but right before the crucifixion there is a account in a gospel of Mark chapter 15 verse 23 it says that Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it This was according to the prophecy in Psalm 29:21 they they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst But right before crucifixion when Jesus was offered it he declined to take it And why he did that why he declined and later on at the crucifixion he said that i am thirsty and when they offered him a sour wine he took it we need to understand that why jesus first time did not took it according to mark uh, 15 the according to tradition when they offer wine mixed with uh, myrrh it produces the narcotic effects and narcotic effects can knock you down It is just like uh, going through surgery and you are under anesthesia you don't feel the the pain of knife and scissors on doctor's hands uh, Jesus declined it because he went through all pain just like uh, going through open heart surgery or brain surgery without anesthesia he took a pain a stroke after stroke after stroke he felt every pain and when finally he said that i'm thirsty and it says that in john 1928 it says that later knowing that everything had now been finished so that scripture would be fulfilled jesus said i am thirsty there are two account and uh, about jesus said i am thirsty one uh, uh, let us go back we have to look at this uh, john 1928 later knowing everything has been finished he said i am thirsty so what is finished what is knowing everything is finished there was a part in exodus 34 6 and 7 it reads like this and he passed in front of moses proclaiming the lord the lord the lord the compassionate and gracious god slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness rebellion and sin yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished he punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation here is a curse of a generational curse what about the things that your parents did and lot of time we talk about karma that your parents did something and you are paying a penalty of something wrong doing of your parents or your forefathers that was a curse and that was true in one time when Ezekiel 18:1 and 4 it says that the word of the lord came to me what do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of israel the parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge As surely as I live declares the sovereign Lord you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel again in Jeremiah 31 and 27 to 30 particularly in, in verse 29 it says in those days people will no longer say the parents has eaten sour grapes the children's teeth are set this was a generational curse Jesus wanted to break it. He felt the full wrath of God for every curse. You don't know what your parents did. You don't know what your forefathers did. Jesus wanted to save you 
from this generational curse. And that is why he said, I am thirsty. And knowing that, he has broken that generational curse on you. That is the final work he finished. Knowing that everything is done, he died. He really loves you. He wants to save you and have a fulfilling and joyful life. He took upon him all the pain and suffering to break every curse, whether it's your fault, not obeying laws, or your parents' faults, or your forefathers' fault, or what they did wrong. Jesus does not want it to come, those curse and their consequences on you. Now it's a gift. It's a given freely to you. Would you take it? Would you take it, the gift that is given to you? I pray that you give consideration to the gift Jesus is giving you about the fullness of life. Thank you and God bless you.